Intel's in a tough spot. It, it is it is the, you know, there's the show me states and there's the show me companies. Even a slight twinge or tweak of anything out there and people, at least the day traders, want to pile on Intel. Really good Q1, EPS beat, improved gross margins, lower than expected top line with a lower forecast. And the forecast just, I, I mean, are they down double digits this morning? I haven't checked. Deep single. Um, anyways, it was weighing on it in after hours. And I got the chance to talk with uh, Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger, uh, before the, well, yeah, when the numbers went out, and as you would expect, he focused on positive execution. I think that's fair. Intel, it doesn't have flawless execution, right? We saw Sapphire Rapids push out. Man, that architecture was was nailed three years before Pat came on, right? Um, talk about a stronger second half than first half. That's an Intel reality. That just is the way Intel works. Uh, and... On a market share side, even when you know you might not have a good forecast, um, believes he did take share in market servers. It's market share in servers, that's x86 and R, uh, and client PC. So interesting part, Pat said he could have sold more Meteor Lakes. The upsides from his customers came in, uh, but he just couldn't make it fast enough. There's two ways to look at that, which is, on the plus side, hey, there's all this increased demand for Meteor Lake. That's a plus, right? That's the first uh, AIPC platform that, that that Intel announced. But on the negative side, why wasn't the company ready uh, with the back end, right? I don't think it's wafers. I think it's back end. So positive to see client computing group at 30%. Uh, data center group for this exploding data center market not impressive. I mean, it's single digits. Like, like how? Uh, I mean, I guess every, I mean, you can't just buy an H100 and, and, and not have a new CPU that goes with it. That's just not the way this works, right? So I, I don't fully understand how that number can be so low. We're going to have to wait for AMD to see what happened. I'm pretty sure ARM was down this quarter because they had built a lot not not ARM, but obviously uh, Graviton and 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 folks uh, and folks like that. So um, edge market in the toilet. Not surprised that the edge market, Mobileye and Altera were not good, right? And I'm going to end here. Positive to see Intel three high volume manufacturing, the most sophisticated process being run in the United States today. This to me bodes well for 18A. I know the tech is different. I know the machines are different, but this is just a good sign because this means the engineers are not fixated on fixing Intel 3. They're focused on 18A, which that's going to be the difference maker. At least that's a thesis. 18A or uh, Intel and founder. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. It was a it was a good quarter. Very close on revenue. Uh, slightly above expectations on earnings. Uh, you know, I happened to possibly be in the room where you were in the room and heard from Mr. Gelsinger as well. I might have been the fly on the wall. I I don't know. Whatever. But the point is, is that he really did reiterate, Pat. We're a second half company. So the set the, for the second quarter guide sort of. Um, you know, maybe maybe should have been expected because you know he already was saying we're a second. You know that that's it. By the way, this isn't this year. This is just historically speaking. They've done. They've always had a very very strong back half of their years for somewhat obvious reasons. Pat, the thirty one percent client growth was outstanding. That was a really great result. I don't think anyone saw that coming. The data center growth is just it's just unexciting to people. I mean, you got you got to acknowledge, Pat. Like uh, you got these Nvidia growth numbers. These you know, AMD expected growth numbers on MI, you've got Broadcom growth numbers, you've got these really strong growth numbers on all silicon for the data center. And Intel just hasn't found its, its uh, you know, its mega growth. It did have some early growth a couple years back that was really, really big. Hasn't seemed to catch up yet again from that. Pat, 
I want Signal 65, our testing and lab performance, playing with the Intel Gaudi 3 Xeon combination to show yeah. that Intel does have the software and the hardware to do this. Of course, the abstractions and the software and, and OpenVINO and not having one API, not having, um, what was it, uh, what's the, what's the uh, code name of the GPU? I always forget. Uh, Sierra, Falcon Shores. Falcon Shores. Not having Falcon Shores is always going to bring up questions, but, you know, the ASIC is not, it, it's a little bit more flexible than just a pure, you know, this is more XPU architecture. Um, and it, with Xeon, it can do a lot of the AI stuff uh, and does it very efficiently. And there's some papers out there on it, and I'm hoping our team can get more around this. What I've really come to the conclusion is everybody wants it to be just NVIDIA, um, but there are a lot of players. Intel will be a player. The AI race is not over, but this is also a multi-year front to, bat to, to fight a battle on because the foundry business is exciting. It's necessary. It's, it's a redundancy the U.S. needs for resiliency, um, but it's going to take like three or four years. And so this is a long game. I mean, if you have like a decade and you want to take a risk, like this could be a really exciting play because if the foundry business lands, and by the way, Pat, I read an article yesterday about TSMC and yeah. their toxic culture. I don't know if you saw because we always get the same feeds. I don't know if you saw this, but the toxic yeah. culture of TSMC and how poorly that's being received here in the US and that basically they can't hire and they can't build and they can't get anywhere here in the US because no one wants to work in a company that basically competes to see who can send the most emails overnight. Um, I don't know. I'm just saying. So maybe that's an opportunity for Intel, like the culture. It's a, it's a U.S. company, um, and it is, you know, mm -hmm. a company that uh, that people, at least in the U.S., should want to win. I know there's, there's a lot of people that don't, but they should. I've said this many times. And I'm going to say it again. Here's the way I think this is going to work out. I think 18A is going to be good. Yeah. Will it be amaz as amazing as Intel says it's going to be? I don't know yet. Uh, PDKs uh, look good out there, but watch this space. U.S. defense industry has a program that you have to go through. It's called Ramp C. And by the way, uh, Intel I think got awarded the third, the third, um, third version uh, of that. Uh, my expectation is that if and when. Intel can show traction on 18A. We're going to see all infrastructure. What are you smiling at, buddy? What are you grinning at? Uh, <laughs> all, all critical infrastructure will be flipped. Uh, and if you're a carrier, if you're a um, potentially a university, uh, if you're a financial institution, you might have to fab that leading edge at, at Intel. Um, that is my, that is my prognosis. So, and if, if that happens, just imagine the value creation because right now Intel is getting negative valuation on founder and I get it. I mean, the numbers are ugly, but gee, who thought that, um, who thought that, um, investing four years ahead, uh, $50 billion, uh, before revenue, uh, was going to be pretty. It's not. 